Okay, hello everybody and welcome to today's album review. Um, Brett, have you heard of Patti LaBelle? No. Ooh, okay. So I'm going to share the screen. I'm going to look at the request that has come through. Um, so... I will share the old screen. So we can see Herman Palmer, who is a regular contributor on our channel. Thank you very much. Says the, the oh, by the way, he's referring to the Morissette EP signature. Oh, nice, yeah. Review we did. The only song I really liked was Phoenix. Don't have many album suggestions for you fellas. Lee, I think you would enjoy some songs on Josh Ramsey's solo project, the Josh Ramsey show. We've done so much of Josh Ramsey, haven't we? He was he was bored during the lockdown, so he did this project. His parents died during the, this time, and he dedicated a song each of them, Spellbound and Miles and, mile, and Miles and Miles. I was going to say Miles and More. I think that's like what, um, what do you call it? Um, a loyalty program, an airline's loyalty program. Okay. Miles and More. <laughs> he also got married and wrote a song for his wife, like you do. But anyway, we're going to ignore all that for the moment because the other album I suggest is Flame by Patti LaBelle, which is what we're going to be reviewing. So you said you haven't heard of her, and neither have I. So here she is. Um, she's an American R&B singer and actress. She's been referred to as the godmother of soul. And that's for the album. It's here. It's here. So... It's an album from 1997, so we're going to be listening to a, an album from the 1990s, which is a wow um, a period that we quite like generally. Ooh. Yeah, we've always so, referred to it. We've never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a bit of information here about it. Um, let's have a look. Critical reception. Flame is largely a slick, seductive collection of ballads. Ooh, I like that. Punctuated by a handful of restrained dance pop numbers. Uh, it's no different from any of our, our 90s albums, but it isn't a bad thing, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, it's a pl pleasurable, listenable album, but there aren't enough killer hooks or great songs to make it a standout in her catalogue. Um, so, it's a quite a long album, from what we, you know, 64 and a half minutes long. Quite a lot of songs here, 14 tracks. Um, so... I'm quite looking forward to this. I like the sound of that. Ballads from the 90s. Um, this could be the one. <laughs> this could be the one, I'm telling you. <laughs> By the album, you might fully enjoy and embrace. Who knows? Maybe. What about you? Don't be How hopeful. About it? Yeah, I think yeah. also, I think I, it's really weird. Just like looking at her picture and being this period of time and the way to her. Tony Braxton is mm. the vibe I'm sort of getting um, mm. from there. Not so much Wendy Houston, more than Tony Braxton. I don't know why it's so much different to Tony Braxton. Um, especially if there's going to be some like pop R&B um, hits in there um, as well. Um, but I say, I'm going to keep an absolutely open mind, clean slate, and um, see what it brings. But yeah, it looks does look promising. Yeah, it's something a bit different to what we've been reacting to recently um so yeah i've kind of put my kind of put the bar quite high in terms of expectations so yeah i hope it doesn't disappoint yeah I'm kind of surprised we've never heard of her um mm. okay anyway we're gonna head off and listen to it and let you know what we what we uh think of it very shortly so we've now listened to uh, the album, Patti LaBelle, uh, Flame. So um, as we always do now, we're going to get straight into the album. And you'll be able to get some, uh, I guess, vibes from us as to whether you like it or not as we make our way through the list of songs. And of course, at the end, we'll give our, our kind of review feelings about the album. Um, so the first track then was Someone Like You. So immediately in my head I'm thinking, is it Adele? Cool. <laughs> I knew it wasn't going to be that. Like, I knew this was... <laughs> oh, like, 
I just, uh, but it just, it just came into my head. Comes to mind. Comes uh, to mind. Yeah. Yeah. So, first song always, you know, gives an early first impression, which is quite important. So, <laughs> first words, very, very slow. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. What, what were you expecting me to say there? I, I don't know. <laughs> Very, say, very it doesn't warm. surprise me you've, you've said that, but um, it probably was also wasn't the word I was expecting you to say. Okay. Well, there's another word I'm going to be using quite a lot that you maybe <laughs> okay. might be expecting me to say. Right. So it was yeah, kind of just, just on the piano. Um, a very shouty style of singing. A very strong voice coming across there from Patty. And then that was actually just the intro. Um, and then it, it, it like turned into a, what I would class as a proper song now with, you know, backing music. So that kind of intro part was actually quite, quite long. And I, I do like the nineties nostalgia with this song. Um, I just felt the song is a little bit bland though. It felt quite know, monotone in the way she, she was singing some kind of one level. It didn't, it didn't really build up too much I didn't think and ultimately I just thought the song was too long I just didn't think there was enough about the song to justify its its length what about you how did you find it yeah so I'm still touching on the same sort of points there so trying to carry on some of the bits you said there so like you I thought because this was a six minute song um and it's always tough to have such a a long song for an opening song not that you can't do it um, but I feel it has to be, it's, it's a tough one. And I say, because, you know, we're coming into this, we're not fans of this artist. And so it, it, obviously it's not designed for people who have not heard her music before to sort of come into it. I'm sort of really digressing, really going off point there. The point being, yeah, it wasn't a great opening song for <laughs> us critiquing it and stuff. Um, the fact is one word, I would have used the word soulful. I did feel a lot of soul, uh, this one here. And and it sounds very obvious because I know she's an artist from like the 60s and 70s, but you kind of got that, what this album kind of feels in this track particularly, very 70s with a 90s kind of element. So can, I just, can I just stop you there? Can I just interrupt you? So you say, she, I didn't know that. Because this is a 90, an album from the 90s, 97. But you're saying she's from, like what, her prime was from the 60s and 70s? Yeah, sorry, so you said so I was, I was more at the end. Yeah, so she was in a band, sort of a girl group, should we say, from like the 60s and 70s. Um, the mm-hmm. only song I would have known they would have done was Lady Marmalade. Um, and I saw this all at the end afterwards, just to get a bit of, bit of context. Mm. So, yeah, so she was on back from the 70s, and I said that's her era, and, that's, and then once you know that, it kind of then makes sense for the rest of the album. Yeah, but this song, yeah, definitely has that sort of 70s kind of sign, nice soul. And she's got a really great voice, by the way. I did really like, I know we are saying a bit monotone, a bit. There's definitely shoutiness at the start, but sort of got into it. Um, but then had this sort of nice touches of 90s nostalgia to it, which I, I quite like. Um, so, yeah, really nice sort of mix there. But, yeah, um, did feel a little bit long there. I did write... Um, and people because it did feel at times her voice especially when she was doing more in the 90s bit did feel um oh god i've got a name now you'll remind me again from heather Heather, that's a heather small um from m people but again that's just that typical sort of you know very soulful sounding um powerful voice um so yeah so i thought it was an okay good stuff but yeah just felt a little bit too long and a bit slow for sort of yeah just uh set to stall out i would say especially if it maybe maybe i'm thinking more like that because in the back of my mind i was thinking we've got over an hour of this and i feel unless it's really going to jazz up or really part out it's going to be a long day in the office which is very negative yeah, well, i know but yeah we're going to be talking for over an hour at this rate with your, with your long <laughs> so uh, <that's>, <laughs> honestly, the rest of my notes won't go as much more to that <laughs> <laughs> we say we didn't I must have. So yeah, but um, that's what I'll say. When this okay. track, let's move on. So that track two is I like the way it feels. So this is slow. Okay. It's <laughs> it's uh, a quiet style of voice. I I thought this time from Patty, and I'm finding this quite boring too. 
even more boring than the previous song. It, 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 it is monotone. There's not, nothing is really happening to make me like this. But I would say it does have that kind of relaxing feel to it. Yeah, so again, like with this one, we've definitely got one well, recording this sort of 70s slash 90s um, soul R&B kind of feel. Again, yeah, still quite slow. Um, but I do find a voice really great to listen to and relaxing um, as well at the, at the same time. Um, again, when I think it was again, just for me, just that little bit too long. But like I said, I did enjoy it, but just a little bit too long. Love the voice and stuff. Um, and yeah, that's sort of that sort of really nice sort of mix of the 70s and 90s. Yeah, so track three, You Are My Solid Ground. So another really slow one. But the vibe of this feels very different to the previous two. So I, I, I wasn't sure on like the terminology here. So I think you've used a good word, soul. So I put here, the others felt more R&B or something like that, kind of like black music. But I think, yeah, this kind of soul you're talking about. Um, whereas I just felt with this song, it felt more like a, a song that I could imagine from, for example, a Disney soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Um, different, Just a different vibe to it. Um, it's still not particularly exciting, but I, I would say I prefer this to the previous two. Yeah, I agree. This, as I've said, is my favourite so far. Um, I thought this very much feels like it could be a song that someone would sing on X Factor. Uh, if you're going for like, <laughs> tell me, use a lot of the power ballad kind of sort of emotional kind of song. Kind sorry, of had sorry, that sort of... sorry, sorry, Brett. You, you, just a minute, you you had a connection issue. Um, I didn't hear what you said. Can you start again, oh, please? please. Yeah, it. so I was just saying um, this song reminds me of one that you would probably see on the X Factor if they were singing like a really sort of slow love ballad type song. Um, and like I said, because it had more emphasis, it was a slow again, but obviously emphasis on sort of the voice and the lyrics. Um, and like I said, yeah, definitely my favourite um, so far. It reminded me of a song um, called um, Wind Beneath... Um, Wind Beneath My Wings. Um, I, I can't remember who did the original, but I know Bette Midler's done a version of that. It had that kind of sort of same elements um, to it there. But as I said, yeah, this is definitely sort of my favourite um, so far. I said nice emphasis more on the voice and the lyrics. The track floor four is Flame, which is the name of the album as well. This is also another really slow one. So, yeah, I think I'm onto something here. Like, it's this is just a, the style of music that she does, right? Um, I, felt, I felt this was closer to track three in its style rather than the first two tracks, which had that more kind of soulful, soulful R&B feel to it. Um, also then, I thought it's pleasant enough. And what I liked about this one, though, it just felt a little bit spicier than the previous songs on the album. It had a little bit more, a little bit more to it, I thought. And I'd say this is my favourite song so far, and, it, and it, it was, it's above average. I think this is a, a song that if I listen to it again, maybe a few times, it might grow on me. And it might, it might, it's potentially a song that I'd actually, that I would actually quite like if I gave it a good chance. Yeah, so it's interesting because obviously this song, the previous songs, they were around about the sort of the four, more four minute mark, whilst the ones before were that little bit longer. Um, again, I've put here this. I could really be imagined being covered by um, a boy band nowadays, or maybe early noughties, kind of sort of doing a cover um, of the song, or almost being covered for like a Christmas number one kind of thing. I think what I'm trying to say is it almost has more of a pop recognizable elements, whilst the others were probably a bit more, I wouldn't say artistic, but there was, as you said, maybe a good term about a bit of spice. Um, bit of spice added to um this one's here um and i've put here a term which might come to a little bit as well put modern gospel so we kind of start to hear a bit more sort of like the choir stuff happening in the background which i really enjoy they definitely come on a little bit later on um so that's sort of gospel music but it just felt a bit more trendy and a bit more modern than say traditional um gospel music so yeah a good one i think still think i preferred track three over this one but they're definitely in the same um, ballpark in comparison to the first two. Okay, so track five is Let Me Be Your Lady. This is slow. Surprise, surprise. Um, but a bit upbeat at the same time, somehow. Uh, I'm still finding this a bit boring. She is singing really well. I think it's really important to, to point that out. 
Um, she's a, I, re I really enjoy her singing voice. Um, it, is, it has a quite chilled vibe to it in, in some kind of way, but to be honest, um, by the, towards the end of this, I was happy to move on to the next song. Yeah, I'm really glad you still said that because I've realised probably from a lot of my notes I hadn't, because I feel like the stuff I ended up repeating would probably be a bit repetitive and a bit negative. But the fact of the matter is her voice, yeah, is still really, really great to listen to. And I said, I do enjoy listening to it and I do find it relaxing um, as well. Again, it's felt like this could have been a covered song and has that sort of 90s R&B kind of feel at the piano. I remember when we did like the George Michael album, which I know you didn't like, that same sort of jazz, yeah, that by kind of that sort of <laughs> relaxing jazz kind of um, elements um, to it there. So definitely more sort of a, a chilled, relaxed sort of vibe to it there. Um, otherwise, nothing notable outstanding from it. Just sort of real drawing ball, relaxing, nice song um, to listen to. So the tr next track then was Does He Love You? It's quite a nice song in a way, but again, just finding it a little boring. Same sort of style to a lot of the others. Yet again, I'm picking up, you know, really appreciating her great voice. It, I felt it was a very powerful song, but not not for me, not exciting enough for me to really like it. Yeah, so like you, this did feel a little bit different to me um, in this one. Um, and I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Again, it has this kind of thing where there's definitely randomness of sort of powerful elements of singing, but then went really slow and then a couple of bits of real powerful bits as well. Uh, I feel like this is the song that sort of fits under the category, more emphasis probably on the lyrics rather than the song and yeah. the tune itself, which we find for a lot of the songs, long songs there. So again, probably quite nice to, to listen to and probably one I know we're not great with lyrics um, I know it has more emphasis on the lyrics but I don't really pick up them as much and probably need to know more of the the story behind it to maybe give it a bit more content, a bit more enjoyable in that sense but otherwise again for right now song just again nothing um, distinctive outstanding um, for this one So the next track then was Shoe was on the other foot so <laughs> And I just keep repeating myself here. Enjoying her powerful voice, but the song style is too similar to the others for me to like it. I, I think by this stage, are we, what, halfway through? Yeah, just over. I would appreciate some variation by this stage. A lot of... Uh, no, 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 another thing I've noticed on this particular song was there was quite a lot of singing from the, the backers um, uh, as well, uh, which... I suppose become more prominent in these next few songs as well. Uh, yeah. So again, agree with everything you said there. Again, we've gone back more to like the earlier songs. Whilst I put here this sort of seventies into nineties vibe. Um, we've got the female backing singers or the choir singers, really, really good. And sort of it was them singing with just then Patty almost not overshadowing them, but just sort of singing. I want to say for the sake of singing, but just. It's almost like they were singing one song, she was singing a different one over the top of it. Um, but otherwise, the main thing is that sort of 70s, 90s feel. And I put here sort of Diana Ross kind of style, but I don't really know enough on Diana Ross to really sort of do that. Just a name that sort of came up whilst I was listening to this one. Yeah, and the next track then was Addicted to You. So quite a few singers involved in this. I'd say it's a more pro had a more pro promising start, even though it's the same kind of style to, the, to most of the others. <laughs> Again, great strong voice from Patty. I thought it's working well with the backing singers. I'd probably actually have this as the as my second favourite song at the moment behind Flame. Um, and then there's a bit of a change up towards the end. It, it started to to build up a little bit, become a little bit more exciting, perhaps. Yeah, so um, I always put this as almost a carry on from the song previously, only without so much of Patty doing like sort of the powerful singing parts. We've definitely still got the backing singers, which I think put in a great effort um, from there. For some reason, I've put here again. I could really imagine Boys on a Westlife covering this song. Um, for some reason, imagine them doing their own take on it, being it quite good. And then here we had sort of the instrumental bit of like the saxophone or trumpets. I can't, I've been both there. I can't remember which one it actually was, which gave the sort of 70s kind of feel to it. 
and then the female backing singers starting to give the 90s um, element to it there so bring those two together and that's what I've got on that particular song so track nine is when you talk about love and I straight away put oh this sounds different it has a, a funkier feel to it a bit different this song but not as much as I was hoping for when it, when the when the song first came on at the beginning but to be fair I still thought this was a bit more exciting had a bit more to it and I felt this particular song was more like the first two tracks on the album that have that like R&B feel R&B kind of soul feel to it um, it's not bad but it, it does drag on for a, for a bit though maybe a little bit too too long um, yes, I put here head bopping straight away from the start with the beat, which was quite good. Yeah, so this definitely had a bit more to it than a lot of the other ones. And again, from the thing is almost bringing the past, that seventies past thing, into the present nineties. Obviously, still for the past for us there, but at, present at the time. Um, again, really soulful voice. Um, almost play, almost a catchy chorus. I think there's a bit which repeating sort of say my name, which was. Um, quite good so it was, this one definitely had more elements of bits that i sort of enjoyed um and i think because it had that slight little bit upbeat elements to it there i think we had a bit more sort of from the backing singers from that one there so definitely had a bit more to it so yeah i think it was close to maybe being up there as one of my other favorites uh, more one of the favorite ones from all the album, tracks we've listened to on this album So, and love is just a whisper away. Um, it feels like it's going to be a nice, pleasant but boring song. Um, the you know, piano is being in this song. This time, it seems like we have a male singer. Um, it's not bad. This song it does have quite a relaxed feel to it. Great voice yet again from Patty. But again, it just feels like it's dragging on a bit too long. I, I just think these songs generally are, are, they're, well, they are long songs and when i just think as well when maybe i should talk more about this at the end but, but because the songs are not particularly <laughs> exciting it, it just just feels like they drag on for a little bit too long yeah just now obviously we'll probably come to more at the end but i agree and i feel it's one of those that kind of needs to be in the right mood right frame of mind just to put it on listen to and enjoy and not sort of critique it as sort of we're doing here but We'll save those little gems there at the end, just in case anyone is still listening. Um, so this one, so the previous one said was a bit more bringing it into the 90s. This one probably stayed a bit more in the 70s, which again, I'm not saying is necessarily a bad thing, but it definitely had more of her old style um, 70s feel to that one there. Um, again, I think purely just for those instrumentals, we had the piano, trumpets, um, obviously some drum bits there as well. Um, but again, just a really nice relaxing one was again one of the slightly longer ones on the album so like i said i would enjoy listening to this relaxing way but um as in terms of by the 10th song on the album just yeah a little bit repetitive not too much variation and just it, it is what it is yeah track 11 if by chance this is a a really slow number you know what i mean when i say number I go, you said, yeah. It's just, I don't know where the term sort of comes from, but yeah, just, yeah, just a slow yeah. number. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> yeah, it's what we say. When you break it down, yeah, yeah. a slow number. What, yeah. like a four, is that a slow number? Yeah. yeah. But I do, I do know what you mean. It's just a weird, yeah. weird term, yeah. isn't it? I thought maybe that was just a term that maybe I got from somewhere, but no one else knows it. I don't know. But yeah, okay, good. I like this. Yeah. It's quite, it's quite lacklustre, very slow. But to be fair, it has then, has livened up a bit. Um, some high pitched singing from Patty. The backers have got going too as well. And the song has improved, to be fair. And I just thought it was a very epic finish at the end as well from Patty. So, yeah, a song that got better as it went on. Yeah, so a very slow number um, on this one here, right at the start. Um, I've put here sort of a gospel start. And then I feel like I wasn't going to be saying too much. But then I think it did sort of change up as we. Um, went through and by the end definitely had a bit more sort of a 90s more current for the 90s kind of feel um if anyone is still listening they know the song um by babyface every time um i close my eyes 
if you know that song, this is what this song really reminded me of of that one there. I feel not probably as good as that, um, but definitely had those kind of sort of elements. Um, to Baby there, face. So, yeah. da, 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 da. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> that's, that's baby cakes, but it's, yeah, baby not, cake. not, <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, definitely not like that. So yeah, if you know, baby face, um, just one, uh, yeah, it's kind of like that's the best way I can explain that song there. Okay. Right. So track twelve, the penultimate song. Let me be there for you. Ah, huh? I missed one. Um, it was in a fourteen tracks oh were they oh <laughs> <It's gonna be laughs> <weird. laughs> yeah well I've had here I think just a minute so. just a minute we're going to Spotify just a minute I miss one out sorry everybody just holding you up we're just gonna we might have uh, Brett explaining track 14 then god I may have been a little bit Hasty there, yeah. It looks like I I didn't play track 14. <laughs> That's why I will let you off. You were that desperate to finish the album. No, all right, we're going to leave this one with you. I think maybe after we record, we might we might have listened to it together. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, I've messed that up. Okay. Um, so we should listen to it, pause you. it, and come back onto it, and then you can give you a... <laughs> straight reaction from it you know what that's probably not a bad idea we will do that okay, well, okay let's, let's do these next two get, tracks and then we can, next two yeah. tracks yeah all right let me be there for you so typical patty a nice song but very slow it's quite tedious great singing voice as always holding the notes well i thought she i thought she did and i'd say an overall singing masterclass from Patty, although I, I still didn't like the song. <laughs> but she appreciates the voice, and uh, which is we've got again made that very clear, like throughout. Like I say, because I, I feel bad because I never sort of re mentioned that again. Just feel like I mentioned the, the critique side of things. However, this could be one of my favourite songs on the album, actually. Um, and I don't, I really like sort of the sort of the because I do like the orchestra kind of bits elements from this, the trumpets, orchestra, violin intro, which I really enjoy, the piano throughout this one here, the backing singers. So almost like the good elements I've enjoyed from loads of the other previous songs were suddenly all on one track um, here. Um, and I feel like this song could have been in the musical is probably another reason why I probably liked it. And again, had that sort of um, focus more on sort of the, the powerful singing and the meaningfulness behind the lyrics um, as well. So, Agree, still slow, still could be a bit boring, especially this fine album. But this is probably the best mix of all those different elements that um, Patty has sort of demonstrated from there. Okay, so what what I thought was the last track is not was not the last track. So you saved my life. So I put here incorrectly. No surprises with the final <laughs> song of the album. It's a nice. Well, what what is doesn't change is the fact it's a nice song. And I just put, what a voice. And I felt a rather epic finish to the album, even though it wasn't the end of the album. Um, so, again, another singing masterclass from, from Patty. And I, I, I quite like this one. It was all right. It was quite, it was quite nice. Um, yeah, yeah, so this one... Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, go on. Oh, yeah, I was, I was just before I interrupt you. So, yeah, I was going to say I agreed. We were saying there, this was again very similar to the one before. I say agree with you, apart from the sort of the last bit of the album bit. Um, but again, we had this sort of focus on sort of the piano side of things. I put reference came back to Bette Midler, has that kind of sort of more familiar feels and that type of songs. Again, we've got the choir in the background. Again, the more focus on the singing and the lyrics. Powerful, definitely in, in, in some elements there. Again, could be what could be a song and sort of a, a musical element from there. So again, it, it ticks a little boxes I would probably sort of enjoy, but I think again because we're sort of right towards the end of the album, um, again nothing really sort of stand out ish compared to a lot of the other songs as well. Again, I just think as you said, Dad, I think it's a, a nice master music, um, singing masterclass from Patty herself. Okay, so um, for the first time ever um, in one of our uh, album reviews, we're gonna. 
take a break while I'm going to end the recording. And we're going to listen to track 14, <laughs> listen to it together. And then we'll be back on, um, well, for you, it'll be in a, in a couple of seconds. Um, and I'll talk about, or we'll both talk about track 14. And it will be a very, very, very fresh um, opinion from me. So see you in a sec. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> We have now just listened to <laughs> track 14 of the of Patti LaBelle, Flame. Um, and I was making some notes there. So, yeah, it's slow, obviously. It's a nice, pleasant song. Mm-hmm. I'm still digging Patti's incredibly powerful voice. I, it, it, I just felt the song built up well. Um, I think it peaked at the right time. There's some good singing variation from from Patty as a song develops some higher pitch singing, some uh, yeah low and high, low 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 pitch singing, higher pitch singing. I thought the backers were got well involved into the song, uh, particularly towards the end as the song was really kind of coming into its peak, which I think helped the song to be even more powerful and also helped me to enjoy the song a bit more. I thought it had a gospel vibe to it too. Um, so yeah, maybe it was just nice to listen to it. Like after a long break, cause I did, I listened to the, f- the first 13 tracks one by one. So maybe if I'd listen, maybe if I, had li- maybe if I had listened to this <laughs> as I should have done, maybe I would have been a bit bored by, it. I don't know, but I suppose maybe it just kind of, so, oh, okay, this isn't bad. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a nice, nice enough song. And again, I just have to stress how how much I'm, I'm enjoying uh, Patty's voice. So, Brett, what about you? Yeah, so again, agree with all your points there. So, you know, <laughs> it'd be hard not to when you just listen straight um, to it there. But yeah, the key things for me from that one, um, from all the tracks we've been saying, Peter, obviously, this had that more sort of modern or present 90s feel um, to it there. Really enjoyed the sort of the choir backing. Um, and this one here, um, again, one for us, this sort of modern gospel could almost imagine, even though as slow as it was, the more most all starting to clap and really get into it. I really enjoyed the sort of the fading out at the end as well. So this is a slightly longer song. Um, and the key thing, one of it was there, yeah, just the powerful elements of singing um, from Patty um, in this one here. I actually thought um, this was actually a, a nice, even though it was very similar to a lot of the others and parts. Um, actually felt like a really nice song to end the album on, I said, especially that fade out with the gospel singing, her just sort of doing her last notes as it goes there. So, yeah, that was a, a nice ending. Okay, so I'm going to sum up now. So I guess for me, um, yeah, I, I wasn't, as you could probably tell, I wasn't a, a huge fan of the album. Um I just found it basically it wasn't my type of pop music. I think when we looked at who she was I don't know, on Wikipedia, I think it was, and it said like she's a pop singer as well from the nineties as well, kind of had my hopes up, but it, it wasn't to be, it's not just not my style of, not my style of songs that, that I like, to be honest. Um, but still saying that I'm really glad we were introduced to, some 90s music, okay, even though, as you say, she was popular back in the 70s and 60s, did you say, or 80s? Yeah, about 60s and 70s. Yeah, so she must have been pretty pretty old, on well, certainly not, not a young spring chicken when she recorded this in the late 90s. So, um, yeah, it'd be interesting, maybe I, would, I, maybe I would have preferred maybe listening to, because I really do like 90s pop music, maybe a younger person in the 90s, Singing alone, maybe that would have been more my more my type of thing. Um, but I really enjoyed her voice. A singer that I'd never heard of. Um, but yeah, really, really impressed with her. So you said she did Lady Marmalade. Is that the is that the voulez vous, voulez vous coucher avec moi ce soir? Ah, so that was the original song, was it? Well, this is the thing. I, again, I have to be more into it. I don't know if, that, if they actually did the original original, but they definitely mm. did 
one of the, the fleet earlier versions um, of it, or at least made it popular in, okay. in those times, I guess, yeah. Well, what are they called, that band? Uh, the Labels. Oh, they called the Labels. What were it? So the Sisters? I think so, yeah. Again, I didn't go too much deep into, into that one there, but yeah. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, I just think the, the sort of the reason I didn't like it so much is just because it didn't really wasn't happening enough for me. It wasn't exciting enough. Um, I didn't feel like a, like really choruses that got me going. Maybe with the exception of Flame, I thought that was a good, a pretty good song that I'd like to listen listen to again. Um, do you know if any of these songs were big hits? Um, no, I think there was one of them was a released song, um, and I thought I put a little note next to it, which one it was, I haven't got to hear, but I, again, I think there was only one real sort of released one from it, and I don't think it was that big, especially probably definitely for like the, in the UK market as well, especially. Yeah, maybe these songs, yeah, don't quite have enough about them to it to have become big, big hits possibly. Um, so yeah, like, like I say, I'm just really nice to have reacted to, not reacted or reviewed some '90s music. You know, something we haven't done very often. So I really appreciate that that request and to be to have been introduced to this particular singer, even though it wasn't really my my cup of tea. Um, but yeah, I, I still enjoyed reviewing it. Um, what about you? Yeah, I think, as you said there, I think this kind of gets in the category. I'm sort of in the same sort of situation with you, where would I generally put any of these songs on a playlist I'm listening to? Probably not. Uh, would I want to rush to listen to the album again? Probably not. But if I heard any of these songs again, randomly, should we say, um, I'd probably enjoy listening to it. Um, and like you obviously really appreciate and glad did get to listen to it um and can appreciate um how good the scene was and how good it was in parts um where even though it's probably not general sort of cup of tea as we say um but yeah i think definitely got a fantastic fantastic voice and i said there was definitely elements throughout which i definitely enjoyed from that um, but I said, yeah, it's just not the usual thing. We'll probably go and listen to because there, but I really can appreciate um, how good. And I think another thing is that for a long album, didn't quite have the, enough probably variation to get you it, know, or have those sort of standout elements to make it a bit more tractable for non fans of Patti LaBelle, shall we say? Um, and because it was maybe we had this sort of 97, even though it did, it did have some nods to the 90s, I thought maybe we had a bit more sort of, I would say dancier tracks, but mm. um, almost well, was like, that one kind of, of like remix ones, yeah. We'll go on. there, was, there, there was a kind of like funky kind of track, I remember, that kind of had a, a bit of that, I think. But That was a close one, yeah, kind of needed either a couple more like that or one have that just a little bit more to it from there, really. Um, so imagine there was loads of artists back from the 70s, 60s sort of area who were, you know, singing in the 90s who, you know, did a bit more sort of funkier, dancier um, tracks. So that's probably the only thing for him. But again, if that's not Manuel's well style and way you want to do things, that's, that's absolutely fine. But me personally, that's probably the only thing I would have been missing or nice to have from this. So no, it wouldn't be one I rushed back to, but glad to listen to it and uh, can still appreciate how good um, the elements were of it. Yeah, and just kind of off topic related to our react, um, reviews. We're never going to do this because it's going to be way, way too time consuming. But it would actually be quite good, like if we did, like we just did. So like we come on to the review, we haven't listened to the album, we do it song by song. So we, 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 we record, we listen to the first song, and we go back, record again, and talk. So it's all like completely fresh in our minds. So we're never, we're never going to do that. But. That, <laughs> I did. That well, really good. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe <laughs> next week, if we do have a shorter um, album, maybe one we could trial and see. And listen, put in the comments if you would like that sort of style to come through, and we'll see realistically if we can make that work. We can. 
Um, <laughs> but no promise to anything. But uh, yes, yeah, so let us know your thoughts if that's something you'd like to see. Okay, so that's it from us. Keep the album requests coming. We always need them. Um, and we'll see you again soon for the next one. So thank you for watching and goodbye.